to us about what is great. <laughs> Sister, how many people got tished up in that song? <laughs> what an amazing thing! Minty Jacobson is a dear pal of mine, a colleague in the music community, and you bless us today, honey. Thank oh, you for being so here. Nice. Another round of applause for Minty. <laughs> that is just super awesome. And you all, we get to bless each other by being here today, right? I mean, this talk. What is grace? What is grace? This came to me a couple of months back because, again, you know, Charlene and all of her great wisdom asks me ahead of time, what are you going to talk about? And I'm like, well, what are we talking about? He's like, why are we talking about this and this? And I thought, okay, what is grace? And I remember thinking it sounded like such an obtuse thing. Like, what is grace? Well, okay, well, I guess we'll just get there when we get there. Yet, boy, do I understand what it means on our timeline right now. What is grace? You know, grace, we have this opportunity to look at this word, gets thrown around, especially in our Christian churches. I mean, how many people grew up in a traditional Christian environment, right? Good old Christian church, and you go to Sunday school, and, you know, by the grace of God go I, and God's grace be with you. That was always the big one, God's grace be with you. So we say these words, and oftentimes, Really, what does that even mean? Pretty soon it just becomes something you say, you know, and pretty soon you're like, I don't even really, what am I even, what, God's grace be with you, God's grace be with you. Or you hear somebody say, oh, she was just so full of grace, how she handled that. Just so full of grace, she was just fabulous. We ought to think to ourselves, what's that even mean? Because grace is a pivotal part of human ascension, of human release of human healing. But then we go back to the word grace, and there's a 50 million ways you could look at it. Yet today, what was brought to me to share with you is that grace and love are synonymous. Grace and love are synonymous. So, you know, by the love of God go I. Go, God's love be with you. She was so full of love at that function. Love and grace are synonymous. Now, why is this important? Well, because grace, of course, which is the gift of Mother, Father, God within, and it is the gift of what we're able to give one another, is love. Why is that important right now? Well, if anybody's been watching the news, <laughs> there's just a little dissonance going on right now in the United States and the world in general. And right now we're being distracted with a lot of, oh, look over here, will I do this horrible thing? Well, we move a bunch of money, but look over here. And it's causing a lot of infighting with people. And this time frame, if any, would be the most poignant type of observation where extending grace is really important. Extending the love of Mother, Father, God is really important. Because no matter where you sit in your ideologies, whether they are political, whether they're emotional, whether they're sociological, or whether they're spiritual, there's going to be somebody who's going to disagree with you. I know, right? <gasps> there's going to be somebody who's going to look at you and say, you know what, you are just flat crazy. I can't believe you think that. You're out of your mind. The facts say this. The Bible says this. My mom said this. Somebody's going to come at you for some reason and tell you that you're nuts and you're flat crazy. And that your opinion doesn't matter. And that you need to be swayed to this opinion over here. How many people have found themselves, and we won't say why, for varying reasons, engaged in discussions where someone is trying to sway you to their opinion lately. By God. Okay? Now, what I find fascinating about that is that not only are we supposed to rub up against one another with differing viewpoints in order to understand the grand collective of Mother, Father, God, truly, Yet, it is a challenge for all of us not to what I call get in the snarky trenches with people who don't agree. It's a challenge. I'm Italian. It's a big challenge. 
You know, I, I, I have amazing, beautiful people say to me, you, you've got to be one of the most high vibration people I know. And that is a huge, 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 huge compliment. And I think to myself, boy, I better keep that lid just snapped down. <laughs> I don't want to know what's under there. Oh. It doesn't mean I don't have my opinions, gang. It doesn't. Yet I understand, as a metaphysician, I understand what grace is and why it's important. And I understand there's going to be people all over the place disagree with me for 152 billion different reasons. And I'm going to disagree with other folks for different reasons. Yet, what is important about grace? Grace is love. So if we are extending people love right now, love, that changes our discussions. Think about this a minute. Now, gang, there's a difference between standing up for who you are and your values and standing in the gap for things that need to be stood in the gap for that are important and just arguing for the sake of arguing. If you find yourself sucked into an argument with somebody, regardless of what it is, you're not actually arguing with them. You're arguing with yourself. <laughs> true. True story. Now, you're going to think that's not true. How can I be arguing with me? This person is saying this and this and this, and I believe this and this and this. And I'm in it with them to win it by God because that's what I'm taught by our old, dead, 20th century sociopathic business system that's on its way out and clawing and crying right now and having a cow. <laughs> However, when we think about this, if I argue with you, why am I arguing with you? If I am secure in my beliefs, why am I arguing? That means I'm not really all that secure. Oh gosh, maybe you have a point. Maybe you've got, maybe you've got something that's making me freaked out here about what I believe to be true in my reality, through my particular perspective lens. You know, there's nothing wrong with representing a viewpoint, yet when you find yourself in the rat trap of argument, you're going to start asking yourself, what do I believe? And let's look at the word belief, because you guys know I love words, right? I'm a word weirdo. I love them. Let's look at the word belief. Belief is to suspend a bridge between that which you hold dear and that which you hope ha happens. Hope. Belief is hope. Grace is love. Belief is hope. And I've had very well-meaning friends of mine that are not really religious people at all. And they think I'm just the weirdest thing ever. They're like, you're a psychic, you're a pastor, what are you, a ballerina and a CIA agent? What's the story up there? musician, whatever. And they'll come and they'll ask me, how can you believe in what you believe? Why do people say it like that, too? <laughs> what is that? Why do we have to talk like some really strange script from 1976? So, you know, <laughs> believing... Why do you believe what you believe? How can you believe what you believe? And be a Christian and be a person who's gay. Don't you know what the Bible says about gay people? I'm like, actually I do and I'm fine with it. Do you know what the Bible says? <laughs> Gotta go. So, you know, really, what we're looking at here is my belief, my hope, my hope, my hope, is my hope. And it gets to be my hope, you know why? Because there's seven billion of us on this planet. And each one of your hopes counts towards the unification and ascension of the human race. Each one of yours does. Even those people we don't agree with. Their hopes count too. And we say to ourselves, well, wait a minute, what if it's like some person by my particular lens who, who is a victimizer and their hope is to be able to victimize all of these people? How could their hopes count? Well, that brings a heck of a lesson, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> that brings a heck of a lesson. It does. Because when we have that lesson of somebody wanting to take away from another, and that's their hope, let's look at that. How much of them do they feel has been extracted from them? Somebody who wants to victimize another, we don't just get born and decide to victimize you guys. It's just not the way it goes. The human psyche is not built that way. We are trained to be unkind. We come in full of grace. We come in embodying Mother, Father, God. We come in full of love. We come in walking, talking, visual aids. 
for perfect, unconditional connection. That's a true story. And then we learn over time, ooh, this person's bad. This person I don't agree with. This person's evil. No human being is evil. Hear this. No human being is evil. Now, we might have some rotten behaviors that make some really scary choices that cause a lot of problems for ourselves and other people. Does that make us evil? No, it doesn't. No. We are beings of light. And I am rather unpopular with some of my fellow pastors who do truly believe that we are born into original sin. What even is that? I mean, who, who makes original sin? Was God sitting up there going, well, I'm going to make this whole species except for this one disqualifying factor which makes them all lesser than, ah, I've got the management position forever. <laughs> Could that be weird? You know, we develop God in our own image, right? God has got to be this petty thing. God has got to be this person that judges people and disqualifies them for reasons that we don't agree with because that's what we understand because that's what we're trained. Again, grace, grace, grace. What is grace? Grace is love. Being filled with grace, gang. Are you ready for this one? Here we go. Being filled with grace is not a choice. It is actually your spiritual operating system, and then you have learned otherwise. You are grace. You are love. You are hope. You are bridges to healing. You are magnificent. We have learned how not to be as a grand experiment in the illusion of separation from source. The illusion of separation from source. Now, digest that for one second here. Your first instinct, ladies, gentlemen, folks who do not actually identify with either gender, your first instinct is to be kind. <clears throat> That's true. Now, we have learned how not to, and it takes a lot of work to make a human being really angry and nasty. Lots of work. You got to work on them every day. You got to beat them down every day. You got to tell them they're nothing every day. You got to put them through the biggest brainwashing course over the process of many years to really get a human being's first response to be nasty. So when you encounter someone whose grace in them has been brainwashed out of them, do you really want to become that person that bludgeons them further? Do you wish to become the person that bludgeons them further? Because they've had that grace brainwashed right out of them through ugliness. Now, this is, this is rough, right? Because there are times for the warrior spirit to stand up for what is equitable for the whole. And equitable for the whole is going to be actually completely subject to whoever the whole is who's looking at that. However, we all have discernment and we know when standing up with love is going to deliver far more results than standing up with the same vibration of anger. Grace exists within all of us. You know, one of my most favorite mistranslated, and I mean mistranslated, and I'll explain why I'm saying this, <coughs> phrases in the Bible, and I could have brought the book today, but it has 50 billion, you know, different phrases on grace, and I would have been just a mess up here with post-it notes, and that's just scary. So, <laughs> we know the Bible is full of passages on grace. Yet, when we encounter this situation where the warrior spirit wants to get up and stand in the gap for something that we feel is inequitable, how do we choose to wield that warrior spirit, considering that every human being is born with love or grace within them? Now, that may sound like a weird question, because a lot of us want to get up and sometimes push people in the mud, let's be honest, okay? However, that's, and maybe the mud is a good lesson for that person at that time, yet it is guaranteed we'll get pushed in the mud later to know how that feels. It's called cause and effect. It's called reciprocal action. 
Like attracts like. So here's a thought for you. What is grace? Grace is love. Grace is within everyone. Grace is the gift of your human design. Grace is the spiritual DNA which lives inside of you and every single other person that even though you may look at them when they're spewing hateful things in your face, there is still grace in that person. So appeal to the grace in them. If I'm trying to bridge a conversation with someone from a different culture, and I, they're speaking Mandarin Chinese, and I'm speaking English, and I happen to know English in Montana. Those are my two languages I speak. <laughs> so, oh, you know we have a vernacular here. You know we have <laughs> So those are my two. And I'm trying to overcome an impasse with this person speaking Mandarin Chinese. And I sit there just spitting English in their face, and they're like, why are you spitting at me? So they're getting fervent back in Chinese. I have no idea. Am I going to keep doing this, or am I going to take a step back and go, wow, they don't understand me at all. We are speaking two different languages. I will attempt to go to Google Translate, which is exactly what I did in Italy. Always use it. It's fabulous. I will go to Google Translate, and I will type in what I need to type in, and I will realize what the sentence is, and I will do my best to not butcher that Mandarin Chinese, which I am making no guarantees there, and I will say to the person what I'm attempting to say in a language that they understand. I may make some mispronunciations, but I am trying to speak their language. So if somebody is sitting here just spewing hey, hey, hate, and I know that I am full of grace and they are full of grace, what do I do? I go to my inner Google Translate and I dial up the mutual language that we all were born with speaking. And I put my opinions through that translator, and I let it come out. Because inside of that individual, who may be so full of fervor and so full of angry and so full of nasty, whether that's a family member, whether that is someone who is a coworker, whether that's a child, whether that's just a person on the street who's all caught up with all this, this, this illusion of political division right now, whatever it is, if you go to the translation of love and grace within you, that person will understand you. They will listen to you differently. They may not agree. Now, guys, agreeing is ego. Come on. Let's, again, the, today, today's password is honest. So if we've got to work on, you know, really, we've got to work on the, the need for people to agree with us to make us feel right. They may not agree with us, but they will hear you. If you speak in grace. Now, if your goal is to get everybody to agree with you, you don't believe yourself. And that's the honest to God truth. You don't believe yourself. People don't have to agree with me. I, I, that's, you know, whatever. My job is to deliver messages. Maybe their job is to deliver messages. Maybe we are delivering messages to completely different groups of people who need different messages. I'm not God. I'm not going to claim to know how the system works. I'm just going to do what I do. So when you are encountering a lack of grace in another person and you want to match that with a lack of grace because you're going to show them, my God. <laughs> you're showing a lack of grace to yourself. Because every single person, every single person is a reflection of the possibilities within us. Now that gets scary. Because we don't want to own that, do we? Like, oh no, there's those people way over there that do these things. I have nothing to do with them. And they would look right at me, some of these folks, and say, that psychic lesbian pastor has nothing to do with my reality. <laughs> <laughs> but I am a reflection to them of what exists in possibility for them as well. Yeah, remember, guys, everybody. Everybody is someone else's joy, and everybody is somebody else's horror. And that's just the way it works. So let's just give away the need to be freaked out by that fact. <laughs> and realize it doesn't matter anyway. Because we are all speaking the language of grace. What is grace? Grace is love. What is love? It's a verb. Love is a verb. It is not some obtuse concept. I love you. Jesus loves you. Oh, I love her. 
<laughs> Bless his heart, he's a lover, but <laughs> love gets misused, love gets properly used. Love is a verb. Love is an action verb. To love is to do something. It is to extend energy to someone. One of my most favorite mistranslated passages in the Bible, not the words in the Bible, but by well-meaning people in pulpits. I always assume somebody's well-meaning. I'm sorry, I just do. It's not my job <coughs> to decide somebody's speaking on the word of God from a nasty, manipulative place. I will assume people are well-meaning. That is my grace towards them. And one of my most fascinating moments of my own eyebrow raise, watching people translate, is when Jesus the Christ came forward, and he's preaching to all these folks out there who used to follow Jesus like a complete rock star. You think The Walking Dead has a big fan base? You should have been Jesus. <laughs> okay? It's easy to have a big fan base if you're a TV show because you're going out through the airwaves. How about a dude on foot traveling around a hot desert with no Facebook? There was a reason people followed Jesus. And it wasn't because they really relished giving away their lifestyle and going out into a desert where food was not guaranteed and water was not guaranteed. There was a reason they followed this guy around. I mean, the people who followed Jesus the Christ truly, truly made the following for the Grateful Dead look small. These folks followed this human being because it felt good to be in a stream of love. It appealed to the inner grace in all of us <coughs> to follow someone who actually was literally proclaiming what they called the good news. It is good news that humanity isn't evil and awful and terrible and hopeless. And so one of my most favorite taken sideways lines out of the Bible is when Jesus said, love your enemies. Love your enemies. What does that even mean? And it's like, how can I love my enemy? I, I seriously want to push them in the mud. Come on. That's why they're my enemy. You know, I would because. I want to do something terrible to them. Okay. However, what does that mean? Love thy enemy. How about have grace with thy enemy? Have grace with them. You know what grace and love are? Unearned slack. Unearned slack. Grace is unearned slack. I'm going to cut you some unearned slack today. Unearned. You don't have to do anything to earn it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to give you the benefit of the doubt. That's grace. That's love. That's unconditional love. So cutting your enemies unearned slack, or, hey, just, I'm going to catch the benefit of the doubt. <clears throat> if that enemy is a reflection of me, which all humans are a reflection of another, this is a giant learning pool down here, then I am cutting myself slack. I am cutting myself grace. When Jesus said, love thy enemy, Jesus was saying, you know what, will you cut yourself a little bit of slack and kind of Dial back a little bit. I'm trying to think you're the, you know, big message bringer of everybody dying on every single mountain of every single cause of every single thing. It's a lot to take on. Now, that doesn't mean we have to agree. You'll notice that Jesus the Christ did not say, agree with all your enemies. Agree with them. Take on their modalities. Why do we confuse agree with love? Because the human ego gets right in the way of that. Our ego gets in the way. If I extend grace to this person I disagree with, that must mean that I'm not right. Well, do you think you're not right? Because if anybody inspires that feeling inside of you, that's coming from you, not them, by the way. True story. Love thy enemy. Extend grace to thy enemy. And if you actually look up the word enemy, now I do like to do words, in the Greek translation of the New Testament, it means one that opposes you. One that opposes you. Well, that's a lot of people that could possibly oppose you, so how many people do you want to make your enemies? We just decided that not everybody's going to like us, right? How many people are going to be our enemy? 
one that opposes you. Good heavens, I personally do not choose to go through this incarnation not extending grace to people, making everybody my enemy, so I can exert ego and try to figure out who I am over and over again. That's exhausting. That leaves me no time at all to go noodle around at the Rock Creek. No. That leaves me no time at all to play any music shows. That leaves me no emotional energy to be a good parent to my child or be a good spouse to my wife. Because I'm too busy exacting my ego with everybody who opposes me. How about we come out of opposition with those who wish to oppose us? And how do we do that? We extend grace. We extend love for ourself, and then it turns into respect for another. I have had people say to me, I have no idea how you don't just get into some heated fight with some of the people that get in your face. Once in a blue moon, someone just decides to do that, I guess. I don't know why. I have checked through all of my hair. I don't have a sign that says, come, come yell at me. But periodically, somebody will want to get right in there and just go for it. And I have found this interesting because I've found that as someone who also just observes energy signatures, when this happens, I just go ahead and take a step back and all of a sudden I see this person as a movie screen. And they're, you know, like Charlie Brown's school teacher. <laughs> okay. So when this is happening, I step back and I watch the movie screen of this person in front of me. Because they turn into an open book. That says, I don't believe anything in my life. No one likes me. I feel so unloved. If I could, I would climb up to the top of a building and cry for a hug because I am so unheard. I feel so disrespected in my life. I have no idea what my identity is. I don't even know if God truly exists or loves me. That's what I see. Because that's what's going on. And they're simply using me as a wall to bounce off their stuff because what do we humans need? We need a mirror. It's awfully hard to be your own mirror. That's why we own mirrors at home. I have several. <laughs> so, <laughs> when we're looking at this, grace is love. Belief <coughs> is hope. I have a dear friend who is a, a person who does not feel the need to have any sort of intellectual connection to a higher source. You know, that's somebody who's an agnostic or an atheist. And rock on. I mean, you know, maybe that's not their trick this lifetime, to have to go down that road to develop that type of an exercise. Okay, that's fine. But then it's like, rock on, whatever. I'm good. You're good. We're good. I'm good with you. And this individual got in my grill one day, fairly recently, with all the stuff that's brewing. And this individual was like, how can you get up there and mislead people that there's a God? When these are pivotal times. We need to think for ourselves. We need to pull ourselves up by our bootstraps and quit with this mythology of love and peace. <laughs> I have total permission to tell this story for my friend, by the way. And they laughed when I told them my perspective of it. They're like, that's good, you should share that. For those people that believe that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> And my friend was so upset about this. And what I said to this person was, you know what's interesting? I honor your belief system. And my friend came back to me and said, I don't have a belief system. I don't believe in God. I said, that is a belief system. Do not believe. It's a belief system. What? <laughs> so, guys... I said, I'm going to extend you the grace on this, not because I think you're going to hell, and oh, you poor thing, I'm going to pray for you because you're going to die in hell, you sinner. <laughs> <laughs> not because of that. Maybe that's hypocritical and weird, in my opinion. I extended my friend grace because I know my friend's heart. My friend will give the shirt off of their back to someone in need. My friend takes in homeless people all the time. My friend 
volunteers at all these humanist organizations that go out and prop people up for the betterment of all. Jesus would love my friend. Now, that doesn't matter if my friend doesn't want to engage with any particular religion, if my friend doesn't want to get on board with Muhammad's prophecies or with, with any of these folks writing about Jesus, who, by the way, wrote about him from 99 years to 300 years after his death. We are passing along some powerful fan fiction people. And that doesn't mean it's not true. It just means, let's put this in perspective. Let's put this in perspective. Jesus the Christ, or the compassion of the Buddhas, or the all-knowing wisdom of Allah, or the reverence of Yahweh, or God, is a grace and a wisdom that is born into each one of us. Having grace with one another is being able to recognize this. And it doesn't matter what you call it or if you don't call it at all. As my friend says, just don't call me late for dinner. <laughs> what matters is how we choose to be with one another. And why is this important? Because these times are pivotal for the human race. They're pivotal. And you know, I'm sure there are people in other timelines back in the past that looked at the news or read the newspaper and said, these are pivotal times. They're all pivotal times. Yet these are really pivotal times because we have the ability, humans, to affect the world with one tweet now. We have the ability to electromagnetically change the temperance of the climate of the earth by getting Facebook railing in one way or another way. Roman Empire didn't have Twitter. So we are living in a time frame that is different from other time frames because our communication is different. And if you don't think that matters, I'm not certain what to tell you there. Negativity is a measurable energy signature out of the brain. Science has measured the, the electromagnetic vibration of negativity being generated in our noggins. Spirituality and science, right here, they are indivisible. Indivisible. Art and spirituality and science, I can't even do that, are indivisible. <laughs> Life and science. And in spirituality, I can't get my pinky over are indivisible. <laughs> They're indivisible. We cannot separate people, mind, body, and spirit. They are one thing. We can't. We've been taught separation. We've been taught your mind's this, your body's this, your spirit's this. Because see, if I parcel you apart in a bunch of different compartmentalized things, I can try to control, I can control this one, try to control this one, have you forget about this one entirely called spirit, whatever. And in the middle, it's easier to control the masses that way. This is a time of integration for humanity. It's a time for great <coughs> integration for all. Think about that. Facebook, Twitter, electromagnetic impulses through the internet. Your brain's an electromagnetic organ. You think you're not picking that, magne that magnetic signature that carries with it all that negativity? You think you're not picking it out of the ethers? You are. And you're picking up the love, too. And guess what? Love is a more dense energy signature than negativity. And did you know, since we're talking about science, because I'm a dork and I like science figures, did you know that the human brain, when experiencing love, compassion, hope, grace, explodes and lights up like a Christmas tree. When it's experiencing anger and rage, it lights up, but only in a few little places. Your brains are mapped to communicate through the language of grace and love. And we have to remap all that, truly, by practicing negativity to get our brain patterns to actually deliver those messages. So, what I would tell you is this. Grace is pivotal now. It's pivotal. 
and who we're going to choose to be on this planet. Love is pivotal. This is not the time. Well, you can do it if you want, but you're gonna, it, it's going to be rough. The energies of the world at this time are not necessarily in support of ego confrontations. You can do it all you want to learn who you are, but oh, Lord Almighty, it's going to be rough. You're going to look like you're that one person hanging on to the back of the bumper of a pickup truck that just went down the road for a while. What energies are supported now are unification. That doesn't mean agreeing. That doesn't mean morally standing in the same place as another. It means unification. And we can do that energetically through grace. You know that old saying, I agree to disagree? I agree to disagree. Who's heard that one? I agree to disagree. If that's what it takes for you to do, do it. You know, how about honoring someone in the opinion that does not even match yours? Because they are bringing a lesson to this world also. It may not be your lesson. There's lots of people out there with opinions right now that are not my lesson. There's lots of people out there with rage right now. That rage is not my language. There's lots of people out there who are exhibiting huge, huge swaths of fear that's exhibiting itself into racism and all kinds of other things. That's not my language either. Yet I will extend grace in that direction because that hope that I hold that the grace in them, that will respond, because like attracts like, in the spiritual physics of this universe, my hope is that that truth that is the Mother, Father, God within will recognize the truth that is the Mother, Father, God within me. And we get to build something bigger, better, faster, stronger that makes Steve Austin look dated, because actually he is now. <laughs> <laughs> we have a clock that stopped, and I'm feeling like we're on our time. Would anyone like to tell me what time it is? <laughs> Perfect. I get a lot of help from my team back here going, I got to wrap it up. There was just going to wrap it up. <laughs> it has been about 15 minutes towards 11 for the last half hour here. So. <laughs> um, I'm happy about time it. Stops. Yeah, time stops. <laughs> Father God says, we're just going to keep listening to this message forever. I'm like, I don't think they really want to. <laughs> Starbucks to get to. Come on. <laughs> so what I'm going to have you guys do is a very brief meditation with me. If you will close your eyes and just relax. I just want you to picture inside of your body in the heart chakra that's right in the chest, right in the middle of the chest, this beautiful pink ball of light. And this beautiful pink ball of light within the midst of it sets the planet Earth. One of those great space shots. And you can see Earth just sitting there. And it's sitting in the midst of a beautiful pink ball of light that sets within you. This is how you carry the world. Every person on this planet wishes to have love, just like you. Every person on this planet wishes to be seen, just like you. Every person on this planet desires peace, though we have differing versions of peace. Everyone desires peace on this planet. At the very base level of the DNA within every spirit is the resonance of Mother, Father, God. And Mother, Father, God is the resonance of humanity. They are inseparable. Mother, Father, God is the res resonance of this space and of this earth. They are inseparable. We are one people. We may misunderstand one another. We are teaching each other lessons. And within this beautiful pink ball of love within you, we give away ego. We give away who needs to be right or wrong. We give away the hatred we have, if we carry any hatred at all, for things that frighten us. Because hatred is simply the underbelly of fear, which is the underbelly of of the worry that love is not present for all of us. For this moment, we surround the world with hope. We surround the world with grace, unearned slack, unconditional love that starts for you in yourself first. 
And our last step is to give away this illusion of needing to be perfect into that pink, beautiful blanket. Perfection is the greatest illusion and distraction from connection with the self and source. When we sit with our love and we sit with our fear, we sit with our hope and we sit with our compassion. We even sit with our anger. And to it all, we extend grace. We extend unearned slack. We extend love. The great translator, the verb, the great bridge maker, the great bringer of understanding of transcendence, the great healer, love. And with this love, may all of our actions be preceded. May all of our words be forged in temperance with the grace that inspires grace in others. For this is the ascension of humanity. This is the embodiment of God within. This is the change we seek in the world, which starts within us all. We wrap the world in that pink blanket. We watch the earth get smaller and smaller in this big sea and space of pink love until we are out into space, just simply one with all that is. That space exists every day, and we bring the self back into the body coming down through the clouds, coming down into the valley here, wherever you're living. You embody the self. Take a breath in through the nose, touching the spirit to the body, breathing out through the mouth, opening the eyes. Nothing separates you or me or them or us. Grace, grace. Grace is the love that binds and heals and translates all. May that grace go with you. And most of all, make sure that you are granting the self that unending slack also. Can't heal the world if we don't work on healing the self. Blessings. Let's see. Let's see.